everyone and welcome to the Time to Cook Club and your online class. So today we're going to be making Halloween stuffed peppers. So hopefully if you're joining me today you have all of your ingredients weighed out, measured and ready to go and also the equipment from the equipment list. So let's make a start. The first thing we need to do is we need to cook our chicken. So you need to go and ask your grown-ups to preheat the oven to either gas mark 6 or 200 degrees or 180 degrees if you're using a fan oven. The reason why we preheat the oven is to make sure the oven is at the perfect temperature to cook our bakes in when we're ready to pop our chicken in. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop our chicken strips into a small baking um, dish. Okay, like so. After you've handled the chicken, it's really super important that you go and wash your hands really well with soap and water. Okay, um, and then join me back here and we can continue with the rest of our dish. We're now going to chop up our onion and add that into the baking dish with the chicken strips, okay? So we're using a small red onion today, all right? And we're going to um, cut the onion into um, small pieces. Now, I never manage to cut up an onion without crying. I'd love your tips if you have any. But basically, I'm just going to cut around the sides of the onion Peel off the skin, okay, and pop it back on my tray before finally chopping it up, okay? I'm also going to just cut the top off of my onion, okay, and then the bottom too. And like I say, I'm just going to use my knife to chop it into small pieces before adding it to the chicken. Now, whenever we're using our knives, remember our golden rules. We always chop on a chopping board. We're always looking at what we're doing and we're keeping our fingers well away from the blade. It's amazing chopping skills there. I'm just going to go and wash my hands and I'll see you back here in just a minute. Now we're going to add some flavours to your chicken and your onion. We're going to add half a teaspoon of cumin. Okay, so you give it a good sniff. Lovely. Now you use cumin very often when you're making marinades or when you're making a delicious curry. And whenever we measure out um, any spices or herbs, we always do so over a separate cup or bowl. And that way, if we measure out too much, then we're not spoiling the rest of our ingredients. So just half a teaspoon of cumin. Okay, that'll do. And sprinkle it on top of our chicken. That's going to give it a really delicious flavour. And we're also going to add um, some salt. Okay, so if you're using um, a little salt pot, um, without a grinder, you can just tip some salt onto the palm of your hand and pop a pinch of salt in. I've got a salt grinder, so I'm just going to give it a good grind, like so. And the same with the pepper, okay? Okay, guys, so in with your chicken and your chopped onion, you also need to add in your half a tin of chopped tomatoes, okay? So now you need to go and ask your grown-ups to place your chicken into the, your preheated oven for between 25 and 30 minutes. Grown-ups, you don't need to pop a covering on your chicken, okay, it can go in like that. Um, after 25 minutes, have a check on it, grown-ups. Um, it needs to be cooked all the way through, okay, so no pink bits. Um, you can pop your knife in and check um, that it's white all the way through. Um, if it still needs a bit more time, pop it back in your oven for a couple more minutes um, before testing it again. Okay, welcome back. So grown-ups, now what you need to do is you need to fill your kettle with water and then bring it to the boil. Okay, you're then going to pour your water into the saucepan and pop um, your saucepan onto the hob and pop it on a low heat, okay, so the water is boiling because we need to blanch your peppers. Blanching peppers is where you pop peppers in into a saucepan of boiling water, okay, and it helps to soften the peppers and to kind of part cook them. But this is definitely a job for grown-ups because obviously with boiling water, we, we don't want any accidents with the boiling water, so that's why it's definitely a job for the grown-ups. So now what you need to do is you need to empty your sachet of Mexican rice, okay, and pop it into your bowl, all right. And then what you can do is with a spoon, you're just going to give your rice a good stir, okay, to break up any lumps. So you can actually use your spoon to kind of chop up the um, lumps of rice, okay, like so. We're kind of using our spoon as a bit of a knife. Just to chop up the 
bigger lumps of rice. Okay, so once you've um, chopped up most of the lumps in your Mexican rice, you're then going to pop some tomato puree into your rice too, okay? So if you've got a new tomato puree that hasn't been opened yet, then what you do is you take the cap off, okay? And you'll see a pointy spike in the middle of that circle on the top of your cap. You then turn that around, so the pointy bit is facing um, the um, opening of the tube and you pierce that, you use it to pierce it so you can kind of turn it around and then you've made um, a hole for the tomato puree to come out. And we're using one tablespoon of tomato puree, okay? So it comes out a little bit like toothpaste actually, as you can see. So one tablespoon, I think that will do. In there, and that's going to give your rice a really lovely concentrated tomatoey flavour. You're just going to stir that into the rice, okay? At the same time, you know, if you see any more lumps, then just keep trying to break those up. Now we're just going to pop the rice to one side while we prepare our peppers. Okay, so it's now time to prepare our peppers, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut um, around the top part of your pepper so that we can take the top part off so it's like a bit of a lid, okay? Um, because we're trying to make your pepper look a little bit like a pumpkin, okay? So grown-ups, you'll have to help with this special job too. What we're going to do is we're going to pop our knife in, okay, um, to create that lid and we're just going to cut all the way around in a circular shape until we have cut that top off, okay? And we can pull it out like this. Now we're keeping the stalks on today because like I say, we're trying to create that lovely um, Halloween pumpkin feel, okay? So once you have um, cut your top off, okay? You can then just cut the um, seeds off, okay? Because we don't want the seeds, so I just slice the seeds off, but my pepper lid is still intact. And I'm just going to pop all of these little parts of the pepper that we don't want into a separate cup, okay? Just to help keep everything tidy. Now, inside your pepper, there might be some white um, bits, okay? So you can peel those off or cut them off. And if there's any seeds, then they can come out too, okay? What's sometimes really helpful is if you pop your pepper upside down and you give it a good tap, okay? and then your seeds should come out. All right, and when we've done that for one of our peppers, we're just going to carry on and do it for the other three, okay? So we'll leave that one to one side, and we'll cut the top off of this one, okay? So like I say, it's basically a little bit like you're carving your pumpkin, okay? And give it a good wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Sometimes these are a little bit tricky to come out. We've got lots of seeds in. Okay, there we go. So we're going to cut the seeds off of this one. That's it, well done. Okay, and once our um, peppers have been cooked, obviously we won't eat, uh, we don't need to eat the stalks. Um, it's just really for decoration. Okay, so again, pull off any white bits in your pepper. Turn your pepper upside down and give it a tap, 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 tap. And then, like I said, that will get rid of all the seeds of the pepper. Okay. Take your time with it. There's no rush and you're doing a really fabulous job. Well done. So join me back here when you've prepared your other two peppers and we can continue with our dish together. So hopefully by now you have um, cut up your peppers. You've got a pepper lid. Um, on top um, and you've taken out all of your seeds and white bits from the middle. So you're now ready to start carving your peppers with like pumpkin style faces. Um, so you will need your grown-ups help for this. You can use cutters or you can use a sharp knife or if you have a pumpkin carving kit you can use that if that's easiest, okay? Um, what I would suggest maybe is popping a small potato into your um, pepper, okay? And this will make it easier to cut your pepper, um, give you something to kind of press on, while also protecting the other side of the pepper too. 
So I'm using a knife that I got in a pumpkin carving kit last year. Okay, but you can just use a regular knife if you want. So we're gonna start off by cutting our eyes. So we're gonna do like triangle eyes. Okay, like so. Go nice and slow and definitely ask your grown-ups to help you with this job. And then we're going to cut a mouth. So I'm going to do like a zigzag style mouth, I think. Okay, so here we have my, I don't know if you can see it, my pumpkin style face. I've got two triangles for the eyes and like a zigzag bit for the mouth, okay? So I'm going to leave you guys to crack with your carving of your pepper faces and join me back here when you cut out all four faces with the help of your grown-ups and we can continue with the dish. Okay, okay, welcome back guys. So hopefully by now you have chopped up all of your pepper faces, okay? I think they look absolutely fantastic. So now what you need to go and do is you need to go and ask your grown-up to pop your pepper bases, so not the tops, just the bases, into your saucepan of boiling water and cook for five minutes. You're aiming for your peppers to be lovely and tender and soft, okay? So after five minutes, grown-ups, please do take out your peppers with a fork and place them on a plate to cool, okay? Um, you can then turn your hob off, okay, and pop the tops of the peppers in just to soften for five minutes, okay? Before again, taking those out with a fork and leaving them on a plate to cool. Okay guys, so welcome back. Hopefully by now you have part cooked your um, peppers um, by popping them into boiling water for five minutes. Um, my tops of my peppers are still in the saucepan and I'll be cooking those for five minutes just to soften them up. So while your peppers are cooling down so that you're able to handle them, you are now going to grate your two different types of cheese. We'll be using cheddar cheese and also red Leicester cheese. So if you haven't already grated your cheese, then you need to do that now, okay? And um, if your grater has two sides, then we're going to use the side with the smaller holes on it, okay? To get a really fine um, grate of cheese. You need to carefully stroke your cheese down the side of your grater, okay? Making sure that you're keeping your fingers and your hands well away from the blade, okay? Because it can be very sharp, you can cut cheese and you can definitely cut your fingers, so please do be careful. So I've already um, grated my cheese, so I'm just going to pop my two types of cheese into a bowl, okay? Like so. Put my cheddar cheese and my red Leicester. And I'm going to give it a good stir with a spoon to mix those two different types of cheeses together. Great stirring, guys, well done. So now what you need to do is you need to go and ask your grown-up to remove the chicken from the oven and just to double check that it's cooked all the way through, okay? So the meat should be white all the way through with no pink bits. And once your grown-up has removed the chicken from the oven, then you need to leave it to cool. So we're using black beans in our recipe. We're using half a tin of black beans. So if you haven't already, you need to wash your black beans under some cold water okay before draining the water out and then we're going to add these black beans to our mexican rice mixture we're going to give it a good stir we're also going to add in three dessert spoons of the mixed cheese mixture okay like so and again we're going to give that a stir too Right, we're now going to pop this bowl to one side while we prepare our chicken. 
Okay, so we're going to be shredding our chicken, okay, and using that to pop into our spooky stuffed peppers, okay? So to do this, we're going to um, pop one fork into your chicken, okay, and use the other fork to kind of pull the chicken apart. And this is known as shredding our chicken, okay? So just keep going until you have pulled all the um, chicken breast apart, okay? So you'll end up with kind of smaller, thinner bits of chicken, all right? And um, please do be careful though, if you've just taken your chicken out of the oven, then the dish will be really hot, okay? Um, we don't want any burnt hands or fingers, okay? So please do be careful. So we'll just continue to shred our chicken until we have worked on all the chicken pieces, all the chicken strips, okay? Great work guys, super shredding. And every now and again, if it all gets caught up in one fork, you can push it off with the other fork too, okay? Like I say, you're aiming for much smaller pieces of um, chicken. Great work guys, super shredding skills. Okay, once you have shredded all of your chicken, you can then add it to the bowl with the rest of your ingredients. So as I said, please do be careful if you've just taken the dish out of the oven because it will be really hot, okay? Smells really delicious. Okay, and then you're going to give this mixture another stir. See if all the chicken is nicely broken up, okay? So now if your oven is still on, you need to go and ask your grown-ups to turn the oven down to either gas mark four or 180 degrees or 160 degrees if you're using a fan oven. It needs to be at a lower temperature than um, it was at to cook our chicken. Okay, so the last thing we need to add to our ingredients, if you're using them, are your fresh basil leaves. Give it a good sniff, they smell absolutely amazing. Now, basil leaves um, are a type of herb and we use them a lot in Italian style dishes. So things like pizza, um, pasta, pesto, all can have basil in them, okay? So we're gonna chop these up. If you don't want to cut them up, then you can always um, just pull them apart okay, into small pieces before adding them to your mixture. Okay, and we're gonna give that a good stir again. I think that's just about done. What a yummy mixture to pop into your Halloween pepper shells. Okay, so now it's time for us to fill our pepper shells. And what we're going to do is we're going to spoon our mixture into our pepper shells, okay? So we're going to divide the mixture between the four pepper shells, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm popping a spoonful in and then I can go back and add more, okay? Once all of my pepper shells have had one spoonful, okay? Try and um, keep all the ingredients inside of the peppers rather than kind of on the edges. And don't worry if they kind of fall over a little bit, that's fine. Kind of try and prop them up on each other. Okay, and push the mixture down with the back of your spoon so that you can get more mixture into your peppers. Great work guys, well done. These are gonna be so super tasty. Can't wait to try them.
Okay, so once you've stuffed your peppers with the mixture, you can then put the tops of your peppers on, okay? Now you can pop them onto the same pepper and that they'll cut off, or you can mix and match if you want some colorful um, pumpkin style peppers. Okay, and now with your cocktail stick, what you can do is you can press it very carefully um, through the top and into the side, so it's kind of diagonally on. And this is going to keep your lid on top of your um, pepper, okay? So you can pop about three in to just secure your lid. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get some tin foil, okay, get some tin foil, and you're going to pop it around the pepper to kind of create a bit of a blanket for your pepper, leaving the features, the face, okay, out, okay? And then you're going to pop it into a baking dish, okay? I'm going to repeat for the other peppers, okay? So pop our cocktail sticks in first to just secure the lid to the pepper, okay, like so. And then get your foil out Okay, pop it round to create a bit of a little blanket, as I suppose. Okay, leaving the face uncovered and then pop it into your baking dish. So I've got one more to go. Be careful when you're using these cocktail sticks that you don't kind of stab yourself in the finger because they are sharp. Okay, this one in. Amazing. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pop foil all over the top of your baking um, dish. Okay, cover that. And then you're going to ask your grown-ups to pop this dish into the oven to cook for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes has passed, you're then going to ask your grown-up to take the foil covering off the top, so this bit off the top, and cook for a further 10 minutes. The peppers should be nice and soft by the time you've cooked them and the filling should be piping hot. So join me back here when you've cooked your peppers for a total of 35 minutes. So 25 minutes with the foil covering on and then another 10 minutes um, after with the foil covering off. Okay, but go and ask your grown-ups to do those special jobs. I'll see you back here in a bit out of the oven. Now, you need to do this next job with your grown-ups, okay, because your dish will be super hot, as will your peppers, so please do be careful. So grown-ups, what you're going to do is you're going to really, really carefully fold down the tin foil, okay, and take the tops off of your peppers by um, taking out the uh, cocktail sticks, okay? You're then going to top the um, mixture inside of your pepper with um, some cheese, some of the cheese mix, okay? Um, and you can pop your top from your pepper just next to it, okay? Because what you want is for your um, cheese mix to all melt and go nice and um, golden brown, okay? So just folding down these um, bits of tin foil as best we can, okay? Taking off the lids. So, being really careful, because like I say, this is boiling hot. Okay, your um, peppers do need to be stood up, otherwise the cheese mixture will just go everywhere, okay? So you're going to share the cheese mixture between the um, peppers. Okay. Like so. One more to do. Okay. Okay. So now, grown ups, what you're going to do is you're going to pop um, your dish back into the oven for five minutes just so that the cheese has a chance to cook and go nice and brown. Okay, so join me back here in five minutes time and we can have a look at our face. Okay guys, so welcome back. So you need to ask your grown-ups to take your peppers out of the oven, okay, and then your grown-ups um, can help you to pop your peppers onto a plate. 
um, to serve. Now um, your peppers will be absolutely boiling hot so your rennets definitely need to do this job and you can pop the lids back on to your peppers okay for that lovely Halloween pumpkin effect. So you should be really proud of yourselves guys because you've made dinner and they look and smell awesome. Well done you. So thank you so much for joining me this week to make our Halloween stuffed peppers. I hope you've enjoyed joining in with me, but more importantly, I hope you enjoy eating and sharing your Halloween stuffed peppers with your friends and family. I really look forward to cooking with you again next week when we'll be making another delicious treat from our spooky treats menu in October. Thanks again for joining me. Have a lovely week. Bye guys.